Let's get into it. We, you guys are going to be amazed tonight. We are in Revelation chapter 9. Now remember, so you, you guys, I don't know if you remember or not, but four trumpets have already been blown. And the last three trumpets are called the woes. Whoa. Whoa. Man, so you already know it's about to jump off like a man on a bridge. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Because of that reason, this see, this is the part where Revelation starts to get scary. We're only going to get through four verses tonight. <laughs> we're only going to get through four. We're going to Revelation 9 verses 1 through 4. And all this time, and well, we got lots of time tonight. You guys ready? Here we go. Rico, I'm, gl I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Let's dive in. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. The Bible says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw what? A star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given what? What kind of key did this dude get? He got the key to the bottomless pit. All right. It's about to start getting real deep right here, Rico. You ready? You ready? Which angel sounded? What is five the number of? And death. So every number has a designation that it represents in the Bible. Five is the number of grace, but it's also the number of death. Okay, so that's where we are right now. He just blew the trumpet, and it sounded like grace to some people, but it sounded like death to others. Because when he blew that trumpet, man, we don't even have, we're not even going to go and take a look at the vial, right? Because you guys know the trumpet doesn't cause anything to happen. It's the vial being poured out. But there's so much. We're going to look at the vial, what happens when they pour out the vial, the bowl. We're going to look at that next week, Lord willing. But right now, we got we to gotta stick with this. This is so important. You need to understand who it's talking about. And the fifth angel sounded. And what did I see? A star. What's a star? An angel. Which angel is this? Wait, what did this angel do? If you look at what the angel did, it'll tell you exactly who it is. What did the angel do? Nah. What did he do? I saw a star. What star you know ever fell from heaven? Satan. Okay, so we're talking about Satan right here. Watch this. Let me let me get um let me get Luke chapter 10, verse 18. Luke, write these precepts down. You're gonna have to, you're gonna need to know this stuff. Luke chapter 10. Verse 18. This is Jesus speaking. He says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Okay. So we're reading over here in Revelation chapter 9. And there's an angel, a star. We know that the, that the stars are angels because Jesus told us that. He said there was a star, and what did the star do? He fell from heaven. And what does he get? He gets the key to the bottomless pit. All right, we're gonna have to talk about this one for a while. See, Satan gets the, the world teaches you, when you watch shows like Supernatural, they teach you that Satan is the king of hell, that he lives in hell. Satan don't live in hell. He ain't seen no parts of it, but he's going there one day. He's He doesn't live in hell. Isn't that weird? He's not running around with a pitchfork trying to take people to hell. That's not what he does at all. As a matter of fact, there's another angel with a whole nother name, and he's the one who lives in hell. <laughs> you want to see who it is? Watch. Give me Revelation chapter 9, verse, jump down to verse 11. Revelation chapter 9, verse 11 tells you who's the angel. Watch this. The Bible says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. 
Okay, so now this angel falls from heaven and he's got the key. And what does he do? He unlocks the bottomless pit. And all those angels that are in the bottomless pit, they have a king over them. And it's not the angel that freed everybody. Bible says, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Apollyon. That sounds familiar, don't it? You guys ever heard of Apollo? Same person, same person. Apollo, Apollyon, they're both the same. All right, so Satan is not the king of hell. He's not the ruler of hell. As a matter of fact, he don't live in hell. But what we just saw was that he got the key to the bottomless pit. Okay. Let's talk about this pit for a minute. And to him was given the key. What's in the bottomless pit? The fallen angels are in the bottomless pit. That sounds like his crew. It sounds like he's getting ready for the war, huh? He falls from heaven and he's like, I got to get my crew out, my crew. And so he goes, he gets the key and he unlocks the bottomless pit. And what comes out? Whew, locusts. The Bible describes them as locusts. Four different types of locusts. But they're not really locusts because they have the teeth of a lion, the hair of a woman. They have the face of a man. They have the tail of a scorpion. They're hybrid creatures. Let's talk more about this bottomless pit, um, because you guys know there's nothing new under the sun. But there was a time when there was no bottomless pit and God made it. When did he make the bottomless pit? Huh? Huh? In Egypt? Nope, not in Egypt. That's pretty good, though. That's good. Huh? Greg's back there like. When did he make the bottomless? Pit? See, the, see, everything that exists now is something that existed before and the new testament is literally just the old testament but you can't see it all it's full of pictures right we're going to come back to that one in a second i don't think you guys are ready for that watch this give me luke chapter 8 verse 3 let's learn more about this pit luke chapter 8 verse 3 No, no, I'm sorry. Let me see this one real quick. That's not the one I want. I'll go, I'll go too deep on that. All right. Hmm. Give me Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. We're going to stay with this pit for a few seconds. Because... John saw it. Now, remember, when you guys are reading the Bible, there's the picture and then there's the teaching. So you'll hear about it before it actually happens. So John said, I saw another angel. Or I saw a star fall from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit. You don't get more information about that until you get to Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Wait, this is a different angel. This is a different angel. This is not Satan. You guys know that, right? This is the angel who put Satan in the bottomless pit. Let's keep reading. It says, verse 2, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. Okay, so what happened first? Satan fell from heaven and he got the key to the bottomless pit and he opened it up and freed all the fallen angels and they're running through the world doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And Christ is like, let's put an end to that. Grab him, throw him in the bottomless pit and lock it again. How long is he in there for? A thousand years. Okay, let's keep going. Verse three and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season okay so now we see first thing that's in the bottomless pit well that's not actually the first thing i'm gonna show you what's already in the pit 
because there's already some stuff in the pit. But he falls from heaven. He gets the key. He unlocks it. He releases all of the fallen angels, which are already in the pit. They start running crazy. They're stinging men with their tails and people won't die for five months. It's just torment. They're just destroying everything. And after he's done all of that, when Christ comes back, he says, uh, we, we got to put an end to that. Get the key to the bottomless pit, grab him, put a chain on him and throw him back in there or throw him in there. Okay. Does that make sense so far? All right. Watch this. Now, give me, he has to be, he's outside of the pit. He opens the pit. Christ throws him in the pit. How does he get back on the earth? He comes up out of the pit again. Give me Revelation chapter 17. Yes, what you got? A little season? A season is a designation of time. So for a season, like everything happens according to seasons, this certain season in your life. This word in Hebrew, now this is written in the Greek, but the word season can be replaced with the word, well, in Hebrew, it's the word moed, means appointed time. So if we're reading this, it says that he must be loosed a little season. So that means he has to stay in there for a set amount of time. The set amount of time is a thousand years. Okay, now watch this. Revelation, is, is it written in chronological order? No, you got to jump around in order to understand it. Okay, so we found out in Revelation chapter 20 that he gets thrown in the pit. But in Revelation chapter 17, we see him coming up out of the pit. Revelation chapter 17, give me verse 8. He has to come out of the pit in order to make war with the saints and deceive the nations. Okay? Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is that's the exact opposite of jesus isn't that right right jesus is he who was and is and is to come but this beast right here this beast is the opposite this is the beast that was and is not and yet is so he was way back and he's not right now but yet he is i know that's hard to just hard to grasp the whole concept hard to grasp take me back to revelation to, to revelation chapter 9 oh well i guess i left out a part the bible says that an angel came down he had the key to the bottomless pit and he has a chain and what does he do he lays hold on the dragon who's the angel who does that michael is the angel who does that hmm give me uh let me take a look at it real quick did we already so much see this is the reason why Okay, we're not going to go that far. Take me back to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. It says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star. The star is an angel. You guys know that Satan is an angel, right? Satan, he's not God. He's, he's an angel. He's nothing like God. I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Jesus said he saw the same thing. But he fell like lightning. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now, verse 2. Watch this. The Bible says, and he opened the bottomless pit. Man, that's problems. That's problems right there. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. The pit. Bible talks about this pit all through the Bible. Let's take a look at the creation of the pit. Give me Numbers chapter 16. Numbers chapter 16. Let's start it at verse 28. We're going to learn some history because you know how the Bible says there is no new thing under the sun? There is no new thing under the sun. 
But there was a time when the pit didn't exist and God had to create a new thing. And that new thing is the pit. Now watch this. Numbers chapter 16, verse 28. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. Verse 29. Let me, let me paint the picture for you. There's a whole gang of Israel, and they're coming against Moses. They're accusing him of taking too much power. He didn't take the power. God gave him the power. Ain't that right? But sometimes when God gives you power, people will be jealous of the power that you have, and they want to take it away from you. Ain't that right? So Moses says, this is how you're going to know that God gave me all this power. And he points his finger at the men. He says, if these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. He said, if you live, live a good old life and you just happen to die in your sleep, then God didn't send me. Watch what he says right here. Verse 30. But if the Lord make a new thing, there's no new thing under the sun. But this thing is a new thing. It's not new anymore. He made it all the way back in Numbers. It says, but if the Lord make a new thing and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that appertain unto them, and they go down quick, where are they going? Into the pit. This word pit in Hebrew is sheol. It's not the same as like the pit that Joseph was thrown in by his brethren. This is hell. The word Sheol in Hebrew is the word hell. What happened? He said, if, if God makes something new and he opens up the ground right now for these disobedient men and the earth swallows them up and everything that has to do with them and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Now, that's what he said. He's like, let me show you what's about to happen. Now, there's always the teaching or the picture, and then there's the teaching. So let's see verse 31. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave asunder that was under them. Clave means broke. Asunder means split in two. Verse 32. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men that appertained unto Korah and all their goods. Give me verse 33. It says, they and all that appertained to them went down. Did they die? They went into the pit alive. Now see, what you're seeing right here is a picture of what's going to happen in Revelation regarding Satan and everybody else no one goes into the pit dead because the pit is where they're going to be spending eternal life so here we see they go down into the pit alive and the earth closed upon them and they perished from among the congregation give me verse 34 now when people that was standing around when they saw that <laughs> they said i'm out <laughs> Where verse 34 says, and all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, lest the earth swallow us up also. So they're trying to run now. Okay. You guys remember what happens in Revelation? Uh, when Satan gathers his whole crew and they have completely surrounded Jerusalem after the thousand years of being in the pit. Remember what happens? What does God do? He sends fire from the sky and burns them all up, right? Okay, so let's take a look at that in the Old Testament. Watch this. Give me verse 35. And there came out a fire from the Lord and consumed the 250 men that offered incense. See, the picture is always in there along with the teaching. If you're disobedient to God, there's one of two things that's gonna happen to you. Either you're gonna go into the pit where the beast and the false prophet are, and you go in there after you've been resurrected. That means you were dead, you got brought back to life, and you go into the pit alive, and you burn forever. That, or if you're still on the earth during the thousand year reign of Christ and you're still planning to do wickedness and Satan comes up out of the bottomless pit and he starts talking real smooth and you get deceived and you decide that you're going to fight against God, 
fire's going to come down from the sky and burn everybody up. That's you, one of two things that has to happen if you're on that team. So there in the book of Numbers, we find the creation of this bottomless pit. Take me back to Revelation. Verse 9. I'm sorry, chapter 9, verse 2. It says, and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke. The smoke, the smoke, the smoke. It's like a furnace. The Bible says, as the smoke of a great furnace. What color is that? It's black. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Okay, so you're watching TV. You change the channel. All of a sudden, you see a star falling. Shoo, boom, and it hits the earth. Hits the earth real hard. And the next thing you know, it striking the earth causes the bottomless pit to be opened up. And out of the bottomless pit, you know, when something hits the earth, there's it, it technically uh, it creates what we call a mushroom cloud, right? It hits it. It goes up. There's this giant plume that covers the entire sky. And as everyone is looking and the earth is shaking, all of these things, like I have to put it together like this so that you guys can see it because it's kind of like a movie. If you were watching a movie, you'd be like, what is that? Oh, it just hit the earth. Boom, now the earth is vibrating and it's shaking and then there's this big old mushroom cloud. And when all of that starts to settle, you realize there's something inside that cloud. It's moving. It's alive. It's attacking me. <laughs> I'm running now. It's stinging me. I want to die, but I'm not dying. That's what this movie looks like, right? This is a scary movie. Now, give me verse three. Watch this. The Bible says, and there came out of the smoke, what? Locusts upon the earth. This is going to sound familiar. Do you guys remember what happened during the first exodus before they got delivered? What came upon the earth? Locusts, there was a plague of locusts. That was the picture. So that we would, those locusts devoured everything that there was to devour. We'll take a quick look at those, but watch this. These locusts are not those kind of locusts. The Bible says, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Okay, give me Exodus chapter 10. Let's take a look. The only way that you know what's going to happen is you need to know what has happened already. Exodus chapter 10, verse 4. Are we there? The Bible says, Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into thy coast. Verse 5. And they shall cover the face of the earth that one cannot be able to see the earth and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped which remaineth unto you from the hail and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field verse 6 and they shall fill thy houses and the houses of all thy servants and the houses of all the Egyptians which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. Moses just banged on him. He was like, look, if you don't let my people go, you're going to see something new. <laughs> you're going to see something like no one in the whole world has ever seen before. How's that translate to us? If you don't get into this law and this testimony and start really keeping these commandments, you are going to see something that not even Pharaoh saw. You're going to see something that is never seen before because back then they was real locusts. In, in Revelation, they're not really locusts. They're just called locusts. They are fallen angels coming up out of the Balaam's pit. Let's get right into it. Now, there is a whole chapter dedicated to exactly what is happening. This is the reason why we're only going to get through four verses in Revelation. There is a whole chapter dedicated to this thing because the Bible says there is nothing like what has what is about to happen has ever happened before. Give me Joel. Give me Joel chapter 2. Man. <laughs> verse 
one. Somebody tell me, what trumpet just blew? The fifth trumpet. And what happened? Satan fell and he opened up the bottomless pit and now he's got his army. Okay, watch Joel chapter 2. is going to tell you all about it. The Bible says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. What trumpet number is that? That's the fifth trumpet. And sound an alarm in mine holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land triple. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand. Nigh means close. That means the day of the Lord is close. It's not here yet. We got to pass through these three woes, three more trumpets. Give me verse two. The Bible says, a day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. Watch how he starts to describe him. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall there be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Now he called them people in here, but they're not actually people. They're angels. Let's keep reading. Verse three, he says, a fire devoureth before them and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yeah and nothing shall escape them. Verse four, he starts to tell you what they look like. He's like, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and as horsemen, so shall they run. What do they look like? They look like half men and half horses. Well, doesn't that sound like Greek mythology? That sounds like Greek mythology. They actually have a character that's a half man, half horse. He's called a centaur. Yeah. You know who rules over him? Apollo. Yeah, Apollyon does. Okay, let's let's keep going. That's that's nuts. That okay. Um, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Give me verse five. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. What are they here for? They're here for, the, they're here for battle. Verse six, before their face, the people shall be much pained. Right, the people are not gonna die. They don't have permission to kill the people. They can only torment them for how long? Five months, Kawhi, because five is the number of, and death. There are some people who are going to be tortured for five months by these angels, and they're still going to reject God. So that number, that five months, represents death to them. There are some people who got, get stung and get tortured, and because they don't die, they realize God is real, and God is good, and he can deliver me from this, and they will receive salvation. They will have grace. Okay, let's keep going. Let me see. Watch this. It says... Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. Give me verse seven. They shall run like mighty men. Uh-oh. If you hold your finger down on that word, guess what it says? Giborim. What is a giborim? That's a descendant of the fallen angels. That's a hybrid, right? We have Nephilim. We have Rephaim. We have giborim. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb up the wall. What wall? You guys got to see this. This is nuts. <laughs> this, this part is so crazy. Where's the Great Wall located at? The Great Wall. It's in China. That wall is huge. Can't no man climb that wall. You know what they built that wall for? For Gog and Magog. And they have a festival once every year where they create these giant paper mache giants. And they parade them through the city. It's the parade of Gog and Magog. When they built that wall, they built that giant wall back when they were still known as the Moab, the Moabites, Mongolians, to keep the giants out of their land. You don't hear stories. You don't even, like, there's a few stories in the Bible where they're called, I think they're called Emims. Im in the Bible, very few stories of giants in the land of Moab. We don't find giant bones in the land of Moab either. We find them all throughout the so-called Middle East. We find them all throughout Africa. We even find them here in the Americas, but you don't find them in China. You know why? 
because they built a wall and the wall is so big that no man, not even a giant, is able to cross it. It's miles and miles long to protect their entire kingdom. Man. Okay, but watch this. When they find them now, these are not giants. You guys got to see this. The giants are the offspring of the fallen angels. They're like second generation. These are not the giants. These are the actual fallen angels. So is the wall going to be able to keep them out? Okay, absolutely not. So the Bible says, they shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. Verse 8. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. What does that mean? What would happen if I fell on a sword? He did. Can angels die? No. Whether they're still in heaven or they fall into the earth, they can't die. So when they fall on the sword or you try to stick it, <laughs> you didn't shot it up, it's not going to die. All right. Let's keep going. Verse 9. They shall run. How do they run? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Of course they have to run to and fro. That's the key word to let you know it's talking. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Christ warned us about this very day right one last verse you guys can read the rest when you go home we don't have enough time verse 10 take you back to the movie that i was painting the earth shall quake before them the heavens shall tremble the sun and the moon shall be dark and the stars shall withdraw their shining see it's just like a movie when we when we watch what independence day when we watch signs any one of these movies about something terrible coming from the sky is all the same story, isn't it? Something is coming in the sky to destroy us. Call up Bruce Willis. Tell Bruce Willis to call up Will Smith. Somebody has got to save us, right? <laughs> That's what they say, right? The destruction is coming from the sky. Bruce Willis and, and, and uh, Will Smith, they ain't going to have nothing to do with this right here. This, this is just going to be terrible. Watch. Let me show you how how Joel described them. Joel, he didn't know John the Revelator. You, you guys know they live thousands of years apart. But John the Revelator, when he saw them come up out of the bottomless pit, what did he say they were? He said they were locusts. Okay, now watch. Joel, give me Joel chapter 1, verse 4. Joel sees them before he sees them coming out of the pit. Joel chapter 1, Verse four, all right, follow me here. It says, nah, nah, we gotta start it. We gotta start it at verse two. Okay, we go scratch. We gotta start it at verse two. You have to see it. He presents it like it's a riddle. Joel, chapter one, verse two, he says, hear this ye old men and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? He says, has this ever happened before? Verse 3, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. And then he presents the riddle. Verse 4, that which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten. You guys know what a palmer worm is? It's a locust. <laughs> and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten. You know what a canker worm is? When you read this and you translate it in the Hebrew, palmer worm, it says locust. Locust, it says locust. Canker worm, it says locust. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. When you read that word caterpillar, it's not talking about the kind that turns into a butterfly. That word is locust. They're going to destroy everything. And no one has ever seen anything like that. So he knew that they were going to come out looking like locusts. They're leaping on stuff and there's so many. They're covering the entire land. All right. Give me, jump in that same chapter, jump to verse six. I want you to see what he looks like. 
and says, for a nation is come up upon my land. Where'd this nation come up from? From the bottomless pit, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. That's exactly how John the Revelator, that's exactly how he described them. He said they got the teeth of what? A lion. Everybody sees the same thing. When we're studying Revelation, it's impossible to just study it without going back and finding out, man, why did John say that? Why did he say that? Take me back to Revelation before we go too deep into this. <laughs> Revelation chapter 9, let's read verse 3 again. Let's find out what it says now. And there came out of the smoke locusts. Are they locusts? No, they're angels fallen angels upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power what does a scorpion do it stings you okay verse four man we I, this is like a movie because you guys 40 minutes has passed by since i've been up here already i looked at my watch it's going by super fast isn't it four i've already been up here for 40 minutes i only got five minutes <laughs> That's the reason why we can only get to verse four. It's nuts. Okay, watch this, verse four. And it was commanded them. Now, you guys know that everything follows the commandments of God. I don't care if you're a fallen angel. I don't care if you're Satan. There's only one people who think that they don't have to follow the commandments. Satan knows he has to keep the commandments. These fallen angels know they have to keep the commandments. You know who don't want to keep the commandments? You don't want to keep the commandments. That's you. Okay, watch this. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. Hallelujah. We're going to have to go five minutes over. I promise you. Watch this. But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Are they allowed to sting everybody? Can they kill? They can't just kill anybody they want. See, certain people are going to have something written in their forehead. It's not on their forehead. It's in their forehead, and it's invisible to human eyes. But these angels, these fallen angels, they're able to see it. They can just straight look at you and know if you have the seal of God, right? I look at you, and I don't know what, what you sealed with, but they're able to see it. So if we were watching a movie, it would be like whenever we saw through the eyes of the so-called locusts, there's some writing on people's heads and they're like flying towards it and then they see the writing and then they fly over here and attack somebody else. And we would see that that person doesn't have the writing on their head. What's the writing? What's the writing on their head? No, that's the mark of the beast. We're talking about the seal of God. What is it? My shirt, they got my shirt just wrapped on their head like a turban. That's true. The law and the testimony. They have the Father's name written in their foreheads. Man, okay, let's get into it. Watch this. Revelation, we saw last week that when he opened up that previous trumpet, it burned up a third of the trees already. A third of the trees and a third of the grass. Now, it has been commanded these fallen angels, don't hurt the trees and the grass. There's only a little bit left, right? Okay, but watch this. I want you to see the picture. Because only hurt the people who don't have the seal of God. Let's see the picture of it. Take me back to Exodus chapter 12. Man. Chapter 12, verse 30, verse 23. Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. I want you to see how people got it in the beginning. Because there was another time when an angel was let loose on the people and he was allowed to kill anybody except those who were sealed. And at that time, the seal was the blood of the lamb. Watch this, Exodus chapter 12, verse 23. It says, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he see the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will, what's that say? Pass over. The Passover is the picture of what's going to take place in Revelation. He's going to pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer 
man, if you could just see it, that destroyer, that's Abaddon. In the Hebrew, that's Abaddon. The exact same angel that was destroying in the Exodus is the same one who was the king of the bottomless pit. <laughs> wow. Okay. I'm pumped. I'm getting goosebumps up here. Man, we need a commercial break real quick. Watch this. He will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto you, unto your houses to smite you. Verse 24. Now he tells you this, and now you'll understand the reason why we have to keep the Passover forever. Give me the next verse. It says, And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. What thing? We shall observe what thing? The fact that the Lord recognizes his own and passes over them. That's what we are observing forever. He recognizes. If you belong to him, you're doing this thing in faith. And he recognizes you and he will save you from the destroyer. Give me the next verse. Now, watch what it says in 25, because sometimes when we read the Bible, we read it too fast. It literally tells you that this thing has to take place in order for you to get into the kingdom. It says, and it shall come to pass when ye become to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. What does that mean? In order for you to get into the kingdom, you're going to have to get passed over again. You're going to have to be under the blood of the lamb. You're going to have to be walking in faith. Man. All right. Let me see. Let's see. Take me back to Revelation real quick. We got to, we got to talk about this. Revelation chapter 9. Who gets destroyed? Chapter 9, verse 4, it says, But only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Give me Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. The Bible tells you straight out what's in their forehead. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. I want you guys to see this. Revelation 14, 1. I got to go there too. What's it say? And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads the father's name is written in their foreheads that's what they're sealed with when we were reading <clears throat> excuse me in revelation chapter 9 it said take me back to revelation chapter 9 i want you to see it verse 4 and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads do these men know God? Nope. They don't know God. They don't belong to God. So he says, you can kill them all you want. They're not even my children. Huh? Give me Deuteronomy chapter six, verse eight. I, there's got to be a picture of this taking place somewhere because God works with pictures. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse eight. The Bible says, now this is talking about the commandments. It says, and thou shalt bind them for a sign, for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. The commandments need to be bound to my hand. How do I bind them to my hand? You guys know this is a whole bunch of pages and they're what? They're bound together in a book. And where do I hold it? In my hand. Okay. And what do I do? What's between my eyes? my brain they're frontlets to my eyes these commandments are in my hand and they're in my brain hmm. oh, man i wish we had more time give me revelation chapter 22 verse 4 revelation chapter 22 verse 4 you guys know revelation chapter 22 is the last chapter in the whole bible right Watch this. It says, and they shall see his face. That's the face of God. And his name shall be where? In their foreheads. The seal is the name. The name is not what you think it is, though. <laughs> the name is not what you think. The name is law and testimony. 
Some people are like, well, I thought the name was Jesus. Jesus is salvation. And salvation, that's the law and the testimony. Ain't no salvation without the law and the testimony. All right, now watch this. Let me show you something else that it is. A seal is always attached to a law. And it shows three things. The name, the title, and the authority or the territory of the lawgiver. Name, title, and authority. Out of the Ten Commandments, there's only one commandment that has all three of those things attached to it. What is it? It shows the name, the title, and the authority of the person who gave all the commandments. It's the seal of God. Which one is it? It's the Sabbath. The Sabbath. The Sabbath is the seal of God. We're going to wrap it up real quick. Watch this. I want you to see this because... If I don't keep the Sabbath, I don't keep none of the other commandments either, do I? <laughs> no. Nope. I keep the commandments, all nine of them. What? You you got the wrong Bible, bro. What? You, you can't count that good. Give me Exodus chapter 20. Let's take a look at verse 8. Let's find this seal. Say that again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Bible says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do what? All thy work. Now here we go. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Now if you were reading that in Hebrew, it would say, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy power or Elohim. So his name is Yahweh, which means he who is. What is he? He's your God. There's his name. There's his title. Watch this. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the strange, thy stranger which is within thy gates. There's the specific commandment. There's the law. This is how you know if you're keeping it. By doing that. Verse 13. And here's his authority. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That is the seal of God. It tells you who he is, what his name is, what his title is, and where he has authority. Where does he have authority? On heaven, on earth, in the sea, and everywhere. None of the false gods can say that. Buddha don't say, I created heaven. <laughs> right? They don't get to say that they created anything because we know that the Most High created all things. So the Sabbath is also his seal. Let's prove that a little further. Give me Exodus chapter 31. Because I know some of us, even here in this room, though we go to this church, we don't keep the Sabbath. But you need to see you're not sealed without keeping the Sabbath. Exodus chapter 31, verse 13. Hmm, hold on. Oh. It says, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a what? Watch this. You got to see this. The Sabbath itself is a sign between who? Between me and you throughout your generations. How long is that for? That's forever. And then he tells you why. That ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. What is the Sabbath for? We'd we be like, it's for rest. It's actually so that you will know that God is the only God. He's the only one who said, this is my day. I set apart this day for you. I rested. You rest also. When we break the Sabbath, it's like saying, who cares if you created the heaven and the earth? Who cares if you rested? Who cares if you gave me a sign that I should see throughout the entire existence? Who cares? It's like saying, who cares? Let's keep going. Verse 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. <laughs> For whosoever doeth any work therein, 
that soul shall be cut off from among his people. This is very strong language, being cut off from among your people. That means you go into the lake of fire. Because he already said you get put to death. You get put to death, and then what happens? You come back to life, and then what happens? You get, then you go into the lake of fire. That phrase, cut off from among his people, is specifically reserved for those who go into the lake of fire. Verse 15. He reiterates it. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Is there any question about if you're going to live or die? Did you know that there is a question? Watch. This is how powerful it is. It's questionable if you're going to live or die if you kill somebody. It's questionable. I could kill somebody accidentally. And I have to go to the city of refuge. And I have to have a hearing. And somebody has to judge. Not with the Sabbath. You catch me out there gathering some sticks on the Sabbath. The Bible says, you must be the first one to put me to death. And if you don't do it, when people see you seeing me break the Sabbath, the next person who comes along kills me and you. <laughs> That's hardcore. You shall surely be put to death. That sounds like a real stern agreement right there. Okay, give me verse uh, 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. Look at what it is. For it is a perpetual covenant. Perpetual, that means without end. That means it never stops. But what's a covenant? That's an agreement. This is our agreement. This is how we're getting in. Watch verse 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Wow. Let me show you this. Take me back to Exodus chapter 20. Wait, do I want that one? I know we're, we're getting short on time. Hold on. Exodus chapter 20. Let me, let me take a look at it real quick. Ah, no, nah, I don't want that one. Ah, wait, come on, come on. Do I, do I want it? Hold on real quick. I, I got to figure it out. Nope, let's not do that. Give me Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20. I want you to see something. We're almost done. I'm wrapping it up. Ezekiel chapter 20. Hmm. Bible says and hallow my Sabbaths and they shall be a sign between me and you that ye may know that I am the Lord your God what is the sign what do we use this sign to know that he is God did you know that if you don't keep the Sabbath you don't know God straight up <laughs> that's what he said he, he said that it's a sign what's the what's it the sign for that ye may know that I am the Lord your God if you don't keep the Sabbath, you don't know God. I don't care how much of this Bible you read. Why? Because you're disobedient to the weekly appointment that he said. Jump to verse 12, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 12. He says this all over the Bible. If you don't keep my Sabbath, you don't know me. And worse, I don't know you. Ezekiel chapter 20, it says, uh, verse 12, it says, Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify them. You don't keep the Sabbath, you don't know God. Because that's what he gave the Sabbath for, so that we can know him. What do we do on the Sabbath? We rest, we, we read, right? We rest, we read, we get to know God. Does that make sense? What about those people who say, Jesus is my Sabbath. What about those people? Anybody heard? Jesus is my Sabbath. I ain't got to keep the Sabbath. Give me Hebrews chapter 4. I don't got to keep the Sabbath, bro. Jesus is my Sabbath. We're going to find out if that's true. Hebrews chapter 4 and give me verse 8. The Bible says, For if Jesus had given them rest... That's what the Sabbath is, right? 
a day of rest. If Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? There re give me verse nine. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10. So Jesus came. He was the Lord of the Sabbath. But he didn't give you rest yet. He gives you rest during the thousand year reign. That seventh day. We rest for a whole thousand years. We don't do no work that whole time. If he had given us rest when he came, then he would not have been speaking about another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Give me verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. It's clearly talking about the Sabbath, right? One more verse. Man. Verse 11. Let us therefore labor to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. All right. Take me back to Revelation chapter 9, verse 4. Now we see the reason why. Everybody is not the same at this time. There's going to be two different types of people in the world. The people that know the law and the testimony. The people that keep the commandments. And then there's going to be everybody else. Everybody who says they know God, but they got no proof of it. And it's going to be easy to find those people. Like, what if he just releases all of these angels on the Sabbath day? Anybody who ain't resting, who's out here working, buying, selling, doing all that stuff, just kill them. <laughs> just kill them. That's easy. Anybody who's not out there, you just pass right over them. Pass right over them. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. See, only four verses. That's the message that I have for you guys tonight. 